Hi everybody, my name is James Feeney. Welcome to or back to my channel. Recently, I have been thinking about, well, this would be concerning reading for others, but I've been thinking about clients that maybe don't necessarily actually need a reading who are coming for a reading. And this is something that I've been curious about. So uh, there are certain types of circumstances or when people are in certain circumstances and come for a reading. And I have begun to think that maybe uh, over time, I have learned that maybe what they actually need is not a reading or that a reading wouldn't be best for them at this given time or uh, regarding certain issues. And I'm going to break that down a bit further, but I just wanted to outline that. And I thought that it was just some, it's something I've been really curious about and thinking about lately and navigating it has been very interesting. So uh, if you're out there and you read for others, whether that be professionally or if you just read for for friends and family or you read kind of just here and there, uh, anybody who reads for others I think might encounter any of these and I think that it's just something that's that's interesting to ponder and I'm going to share my thoughts on the on this area. So I will get right into that. I have broken this down into, in my opinion, the three biggest categories of people that I think will come for a reading, but what they uh, will come for a reading and don't really need a reading or probably shouldn't be getting a reading. And these are those who, one, have very definitive ideas of what it is that they want to hear. So they're coming to you and there's one answer or one thing that they have in mind that they would like to hear. And that is all that they want to hear. They aren't open to at all what it is that you might offer or have to say. Uh, they really just want that one thing and are hoping and really relying upon you saying that one thing to reinforce, reaffirm, whatever it is, a decision they want to make, something that they want to be, and uh, they're really looking for that as opposed to an actual reading. And I don't, I think that that is some, it's, it's one thing to have what you already think or hope for to be reaffirmed. It's another when you come to the reading and that is really all you want and that's the only option you're going to accept. So that's what I mean by that when that is the case. Um, another category I would say is when somebody is in, in such a state where they are hinging upon every word that you have to say, they are turning to you to almost make decisions for them and uh, anything that you suggest, anything that you say, they are almost taking as, as holy writ and uh, that is another type of person in this situation. And then there's also um, clients who really aren't in the best place and uh, are maybe either in heightened emotional states or something of that manner where they just aren't in the best place emotionally to be receiving or getting a reading and they might uh, require services or things from someone else. So I already do have a video called, uh, I believe it's called Tarot Chariot Moments, which are difficult moments uh, when reading for clients that I've spoken on. So I will link that below. Uh, uh, some of these things, there might be a little bit of overlap, but I do think that this, this video is unique to itself and that we are investigating maybe a specific category of challenge here in uh in clients that maybe don't actually need readings that are coming to to you for reading or coming to us for readings and this is not meant to uh speak poorly of anybody i think that there are times for all of us when a reading is not actually what we need although we might think that we do i think that there are even times for when we are reading for ourselves that maybe what we don't need is a reading we might need something something else but we think that we need a reading so yeah, so there's the first person, the first type of person, I should say, that I mentioned, and that is the person that's really looking for one thing to be said, and the only purpose of them having come for the reading is to have you corroborate what they what they want to be, or believe to be, or hope to be. And I think I've had a fair share of people come for readings, and uh, this be the case. I would say that this tends to be somebody that comes for readings uh, more so at uh, when I'm doing quick readings or more event style readings where uh, it's not a long reading of say a half an hour to an hour or so um, because the nature of their inquiry and what they're looking for um, is really just an affirmation of something of one singular thing so they would come for a quick reading and that tends to happen when maybe I'm at an event where the readings are happening over quick 10, uh, 10 minute periods and spans 10-15 minutes so um, 
yeah, there are those who really are just looking for you to tell them what they want to hear. And this becomes evident, I think, very quickly. These people generally have a very clear idea of what they want to ask. It's a very specific question, uh, sometimes oh, like an uncannily specific question, uh, leaving very little room for investigation. It's almost um, a yes or no question that is that is highly specific. Um, yes or no, or sometimes it's just, it's very pinholed into one thing, and I find there there's no room for, for any form of dialogue or discussion or reflection. Uh, it's really just that, and so that should, that's a little bit of a red flag when it's, when there's a question just like that, that's very yes or no, that's the only question I want answered, and, uh, and the way that they phrase it in, in a very, uh, direct fashion like that where there's no room to talk about it. And then if I say present something and warily we'll go into it and maybe suggest that we look at things surrounding the issue as well um, and various avenues, which sometimes they will say, a lot of times they'll say yes, but uh, just because I think it's more effective for them to be able to reflect on things rather than just get a straight yes or no. Um, again, I also don't think that Tarot is very adept in delivering very direct yes or no answers. If push comes to shove, um, I do have certain cards and things that I associate with a, with a more positive and what I would say would be a yes answer and a no answer. So that can that is something that I would potentially do, but I don't think that that's ever really something I would want to do in a reading uh, or jump to do in a reading straight out the gate. So uh, then after evaluating things it becomes very clear that they're that they keep continuing back to that I just need to know basically a yes or a no or should I be doing this or is that right for me um and it can be frustrating and in that in those instances I sometimes do ask if really what they've come to the reading for is to have um some sort of decision or thing that they want to do um to almost be uh given the go-ahead from a third party or that they just need that almost confidence or reassurance on, on a singular thing and that uh, it's more them looking for confidence or uh, something that they can almost uh, use as the fall, the fall, not fall guy, if things don't work out, but say they almost feel like there's something divine or outside of them that is that is condoning or telling them to make certain decisions. And so I'll go about maybe broaching that with them. And I would say there are times when somebody who is in that position does get a bit defensive. There are times when um, I like to maybe broach it nicely and uh, casually in a, a non-confrontational way. Um, so that way they will be more receptive to what it is that I'm saying. Because I'm not trying to call them out on anything necessarily. I really just want to perform a reading for someone in a way that is um, beneficial to them. And I don't think readings that are answering or just reaffirming things that we hope to be are beneficial. I think reflecting on things and uh, various avenues and uh, most likely say future forecasts or trajectories based on our decisions, those are great. Um, but just reaffirming someone or maybe in that way, um, some or kind of just telling someone what they want to hear is not beneficial almost ever so I think broaching it is the best way to go about it when somebody gets um if somebody gets defensive I've gotten a little bit of that not to the point where it's enough to to become uh hostile but I have received some pushback when I broach that subject and it can be difficult and I think that I mean there has there have been a case or two where ultimately I uh if what they are really asking for is just to be told that and I'm going to say interpret the cards accurately as I see them um, whether that be a yes or a no to a very specific answer but there are times when I will I will do that if they're insistent um, I try to spot it before we really get too deep into the reading or really begin the reading and likewise I try to maybe um, let them know that just me telling them what it is that they want to hear is not even to their own benefit and that I would prefer uh, this reading to benefit them. So there's that. Uh, yeah, so that's that type of client. I think just trying to slightly curve them around 
uh, for their own benefit to, to understand what a reading is really meant to do and conserve and how it can serve them best is what is called for in those circumstances. Next is the person who is hinging on your every word and is going to act in accordance with that or is really looking for you to, to make choices for them. Uh, this can be very difficult and uh, if it can put a lot of pressure on us as readers when we feel like we are in that position. It's almost like power that we didn't ask for or that the responsibility for somebody else's circumstances in life that we didn't ask for. They're giving up in a way their their agency and their choice to you or they're trying to foist it upon you um, because they would rather not have to deal with it themselves. Maybe it's too difficult. It's too painful. Um, they don't feel capable. There might be some element of insecurity going on. Um, there might just be a dissatisfaction with the reality or maybe with themselves and who they are. Um, it might just feel like it's too difficult and daunting and they would prefer somebody else to make the decisions. Um, there might be uh, issues with responsibility. There's a lot going on. And I think that um, people in this position, uh, I think what is best in my opinion and what I try to do is to really um, empower them to let them know that, uh, that freedom and agency and the choice over things that we do have control of ourselves, uh, is something that is really beautiful and wonderful and that we should take advantage of to its fullest, given the fact that we have, I would say, true control over so few things, um, and ourselves being that one thing that I think we have a lot of control over, we, we need to, to capitalize on that and realize how much that can affect and what a benefit it can be to us and how powerful we can be when we are actively uh, engaging in, in that control and using it in an effective way. And I really like to say, maybe take a lot of the reading to make them feel more comfortable to investigate why it is that they might want to hand over their freedom of choice or the choice and the responsibility to, to someone else and what that's all about. And hopefully um, by the end of the reading, have them in a position where they feel more able and um, willing and excited to make choices on their own and then to hopefully still, still investigate the things that they're curious about. Um, but then based on what comes out of it to put them in the driver's seat so that I am not say just telling them what they should be doing, um, maybe not even suggesting things but more so laying out details and speaking on their life and potentials and allowing them to sort of fill in the blanks um, for themselves so that way it's coming from a genuine place within them so uh, for somebody who say is hinging upon your every word and looking to you for choices I would say a lot of the reading revolving around uh, handing them back that that agency allowing them and really um, empowering them uh, turning them on to say, almost getting in touch with their own choice, control, freedom, agency, personhood, all of that, those are really important things to be doing within a reading like that and to almost, uh, I wouldn't say wake them up, but to, to bring that to them and uh, make that a dialogue that's had during the reading instead of just uh, answering the questions as as they may, may ask you. Um, yeah, because just answering them, I think, will really still turn into, like, or just before addressing those things, answering questions might have them uh, walking away with uh, making decisions that are really the decisions that you've made for them, and that's not uh, beneficial for them. It's actually a bit scary, so uh, I would say I refrain from it all directing them and uh, telling them, telling anybody what to do. I mean, I'm never telling anybody in a reading what they should do, but uh, I'm very wary about my wording with clients that seem to be in a position where they, they want me to make choices for them. Next, and finally, I have clients who are uh, in more of an emotional place, a bad place when they come to a reading. And this, of all clients, I think is one that uh, can be one where you might need to uh, either stop a reading or turn them away in the nicest way possible or reschedule, um, offer them some resources. So depending on the severity of it or when it becomes apparent, there are times when, of course, somebody can come into a reading and it's not so uh, obvious the state that they're in and um, it only becomes really clear during a reading. Um, if that is the case, I think evaluating it on a case-by-case -case basis is important. 
sorry, I think a phone is ringing, but evaluating it on a case by case basis, being as empathetic and comforting as possible. And um, if the reading is to say be postponed or concluded or put off, um, to ensure that you are uh, offering appropriate resources to a client, whether that be um, for mental health and uh, just various avenues they might need to access, making sure that those are at their disposal and making it clear that you aren't just turning them away um, for arbitrary reasons, I would say, um, but that it's more so from a place of caring and wanting the best for them and that um, a reading for them at this time or when uh, these things seem to be the case wouldn't be beneficial. It would actually most likely be uh, potentially detrimental and that you aren't in a place or qualified to offer services that would then help them. So I, I wouldn't say that that, I would say that I've just summarized it in a quick fashion. The other ones I took more time to delve into, but it's because the other two, I think there are ways to still conduct the reading and turn it around with clients in this circumstance, I think more often than not, um, especially in the more severe cases, it's best to um, to not go through with a reading or to conclude a reading early when these things become apparent. Um, and I think that this clients in this circumstance can be um, the most difficult in an emotional way just because it is, uh, it is very difficult. And of course, there is an element of you that feels very bad, especially if they aren't really looking to conclude the reading. Um, you, there's a part of, I think, us that maybe wants to, uh, that feels an empathetic part of us that wants to almost uh, give them what they might be asking for because they're in such a state. But I think that we really need to think about um, what's best for a client at any given time. And of course, then maybe reschedule the reading or have them um, return after um, after some after some time and some of the resources that hopefully you can provide um, have almost worked their worked their magic with a client or done uh, a cycle's been kind of uh, completed. I'm really having a loss for words in terms of uh, this category, but yes, that's how I would maybe set about handling or proceeding with clients in that state who arrive in that state or who uh, appear to be in that sort of state at some point during the reading. Um, I think that sometimes things like like crying or tears are natural. I'm not speaking on, say, slightly slightly emotion uh, heightened emotional states. I think when it just enters a place that is very clearly more, more severe and uh, yeah. So yes, those are, this would be my way or me sharing how I would say proceed with readings for clients that maybe don't actually need a reading um, would probably have them better off maybe not coming for a reading or what they actually need isn't quite a reading um, in the first case what they need is really to uh, potentially feel more comfortable in their own decision making and their confidence in that uh, instead of looking to go to somebody else to just reaffirm what it is that they want to hear uh, and then we have the, the second case where we really need to focus on that self-empowerment and putting them in the driver's seat and uh, feeling comfortable with the control and agency that they have and um, boosting that and turning them onto that. And then the third one, we have the client who we, um, as, as readers, probably aren't so qualified in, uh, in helping at that current uh, juncture in their life. And so it would be about really referring them and offering them resources to get the assistance that they need that uh, that the tarot or we as readers can't provide. So those would be my tips there. Uh, I hope this was helpful to any of you who read for others. I would really love to know uh, about some types and circumstances, of course, excluding names and things that might divulge any sort of confidentiality, but um, anything you'd like to share on this topic, I, I welcome it in the comments. So. Like and subscribe if you found this helpful or uh, enjoyed this video at all. Until next time, bye guys.